Today we're going to talk about uh, interrupts. It's basically a way that your uh, programs can respond to uh, unexpected events, events that might come in at uh, any particular time during a program's execution. So someone pressing a key on a keyboard, uh, putting a USB stick in a slot, um, a mouse click. Code needs to be able to uh, detect these events and respond to them. And interrupts are a common way to do that. We're going to demonstrate it on an Arduino because that's uh, uh, a bit simpler than, than using an actual PC for it. So we've got the Arduino Uno and just a switch and an LED and we want to be able to toggle the LED. So if it's on, it'll go off and if it's off, it'll go on. The way you might start writing code for that is you've got your main Arduino loop. If the switch is pressed, toggle the LED. That's fairly simple, but if you've got a bunch of other stuff in your program, that say here we've just simulated it and said that other stuff takes 500 milliseconds to run. So you might be writing a load of data to an SD card. You might be doing a bunch of complex maths or something that takes a lot of time. And that lot of time means that sometimes we'll miss that button press. So if I press it relatively slowly, it toggles. But if I press it fast... So it's unreliable. Basically. It's unreliable, yeah. It's only going to pick it up if it happens to be executing this if switch is press line when someone happens to press the switch. Is this a bit like one of those revolving doors that's always going round and if you need to get out of the building, if you, you, you'll you, make you've it You've got sometime. to wait to, yeah. <laughs> you've, got, you've got to go out You've got to right wait point, to get, right? it, get it just right. This is called polling. You can possibly go out and poll every single thing in the PC saying, has this happened, has this happened, has this happened? Uh, so instead, uh, we use interrupts and they're basically special signals that interrupt the, uh, the program that's running and the program execution jumps to a, uh, a special routine, the interrupt service routine, ISR, and uh, that basically logs that that event has happened uh, so that then the operating system can pick up uh, the event and, and handle it appropriately. Here's the same code. So now we've taken the switch polling out of the loop. So there's just our other stuff in there. And instead in the setup on this line here, we've attached an interrupt to the switch pin. So that's going to look for our switch. We want to call this function switch pressed ISR and the falling just means we're going to respond to a particular, so only when it's pressed, not when it's released. So can we run that code now and see how much more reliable it is? <laughs> <laughs> so loading. So now when I press the button, it's responding every single time. I can do it quite fast. So is this always the way you do this kind of thing then? Any event that can happen at an unexpected time, anything that's happening really fast. For switches in microcontrollers actually normally we, we don't do this because user, user press switches are, are comparatively slow and you, and, uh, you can probably get away with, with polling it. But for um, lots of sensors out there, they, um, or any digital data that's coming in, you simply can't um, respond to it fast enough just by asking what's, what state it's in. For example, the USB connection here, if data is coming in from your PC, it's um, ultimately coming into the microcontroller byte by byte. So you're getting eight bits in and the hardware buffer that, that those eight bits are stored in, there's probably only going to be another eight bits coming down the line behind it. So you've got to get in there and store those, in your pro those eight bytes in your program before they get overwritten. So every time eight bytes comes in, there's an interrupt and Arduino does it all in the background, but essentially your program, your sketch execution is halted. It jumps to a uh, special, special handler that takes those eight bits out and stores them in RAM ready. So then it's, the buffer is clear for the next eight bits to come in. And in any moderately complex program, anything but the simplest program, you simply couldn't do that fast enough just by, by polling the pin. It's possible, but it takes an enormous amount of program time and it's, uh, it's not extremely reliable. So this idea of every time something happens that the program gets interrupted, is, is that how it works? Things, everything has to stop? I know these computers are very, very fast these days, but does everything stop just to sort this out? Or? Um, certainly on, on something that's got a, um, a single core, like the, like the Arduino, there's only one thread of execution. Yes, that's exactly what happens. You, um, things stop, you go to the interrupt handler, that runs, and then your, um, your main 
threat of execution resume, resumes. So on where you've got multiple core processes going on and you have more than one microcontroller doing things. So in a laptop, there will be many, many processes. So there'll be one in the hard drive and uh, one on the USB hub and all sorts of uh, different places. And they will all have probably their own interrupts and things, software going on in there. Um, but at its simplest, yes, an interrupt does exactly that. It interrupts the execution. So a, um, a good metaphor might be you're um, working at your laptop and um, suddenly there's a knock at the door that interrupts you. And you have to remember where you, where you are with your work. You go and answer the door. You handle whatever that is, and then you come back and start working again. And that's exactly what the processor has to do. It gets to a certain point. It has to remember all the stuff it was doing beforehand. So it saves off various bits of data to various registers so it can know where it has to go back to. It runs the interrupt service routine, jumps back to exactly the same place in execution, restores all those registers to how it was before, and then gets on with the job. So as far as your program is concerned, nothing, nothing has happened. But somewhere something will have changed, so a, a new byte will be in a buffer or a, a, fl a flag will be set somewhere that says, hey, this thing has happened, you need to deal with it. And interrupts are meant to be fast and simple and get in and get out quickly because they've interrupted the, the main uh, thread of execution. Because you're already in the interrupt. So you can't interrupt an interruption. But no. Yeah. <laughs> Some processes will, will allow for something called uh, re-entrant interrupts where you, where you can interrupt an interrupt, but generally you don't want to go down that road because it leads to...